So, hi everyone. My name is Bi Bo Zhong from the University of Nebraska. I'm very glad to be here to present my work. And my advisors are Dr. Jin Yinzhu and Dr. George Mokus. The topic I'm talking about today is the evaluation of stress in pre-stressed concrete structures based on acoustoelastic effect. The motivation of this project is to measure the pre-stress loss in pre-stressed concrete structures. Pre-stress loss will affect the structure capacity and the serviceability. The long-term pre-stress loss comes from the creep and shrinkage of concrete and the re relaxation of steel, which is not easy to measure or predict. Here, we propose a possible solution. Measure the stress in concrete based on the ultrasonic acoustoelastic effect. The acoustoelastic effect is that the ultrasonic wave velocity linearly increases with compression stress. Acoustoelastic coefficient alpha is defined as the ratio of relative velocity change dv over v over the stress. The acoustoelastic coefficient depends on the wave types and the propagation directions. As seen in the figure below, when the wave propagates along the stress direction, the alpha is about 0.7% per KSI. And when the propagation is in the unstressed direction, the acoustoelastic coefficient is much smaller. Since the velocity change are very small under stress change, picking up the first arrival cannot reach such a precision. Here, we use the stretch method to calculate the relative velocity change. Below is an example. In this figure, the blue line is from the unstressed state, and the red line is from the stressed state. The red dash line, dash line is stretched from the red line at the stretching pattern epsilon m, and it almost overlaps in the blue line, and the, the relative velocity change dv over v is equal to the stretching factor epsilon m. Using this method, we can reach a precision of 0.01%. After we have those knowledge background, three experiments were conducted to verify the acoustoelastic effect. The first one is the uniaxial loading test on a 6 by 12 concrete cylinder. The second one is a four-point bending test on a concrete beam. The third one is on a 131-foot-long bridge girder. Let's move to the first test on the concrete cylinder. In this test, a PZT, used, PZT sensor is used as ultrasonic transmitter, and the QAE sensors are used as ultrasonic receivers. Based on the locations of receivers and the, the stress direction, the receivers are called parallel receiver and transverse receiver. In the data processing, we apply the stretch method to different time windows, the P wave part and the full length signal. In the direct P wave part, since the P wave velocity is about 1.6 times S wave velocity, the direct S wave doesn't arrive in this time window. As you can see in the right figure, when we stretch the P wave part, the relative velocity change is much more sensitive in the stress direction than in the unstressed direction. However, when we stretch the full length signal, the acoustoelastic coefficient are very close. The reason is in concrete, the ultrasonic wave experiences loss of scatterings. After scatterings, the later part of signals or, or the diffuse wave has lost its directions. Stretching the full length signal gives an, an, an average effect of all directions. So it's not affected by the locations of receivers. And the direct P wave part keeps the direction from the transmitter to the receiver. In the following test, only the P wave part was used for analysis. In the four point bending test on the concrete beam, the ultrasonic transducers were attached on the same surface, and a string gauge was used to record the, record the string and calculate the stress on the top surface. This slide shows the whole process of data processing. The top left figure 
shows the stress versus time, and the bottom left figure shows the relative loss change versus time. After correlation, the figure at the bottom right shows the linear relationship between relative loss change and the stress. The figure at the top right shows the stress signal and the reference signal. The final results are shown in this figure. As expected, the wave loss change is more sensitive in the stress direction than in the transverse direction. However, if we compare the results from the concrete beam and the, the results from the concrete cylinder, we notice that the wave velocity here drops in the transverse direction for the bending test. But in compression test on the cylinder, the wave velocity increased in the transverse direction. We believe that the velocity drop in the transverse direction is more reasonable because due to Poisson's effect, the transverse direction expands but why, but here, why the velocity increase in the transverse direction for the concrete cylinder? We believe the velocity increase in the transverse direction is caused by the confinement at the end zone in the concrete cylinder when it's under compression. Even in the transverse direction, the end zone still have some compression in the lateral direction. While in the four point bending test, the transverse direction is free to move. Now we finish two tests on small concrete specimens. Next, we apply the same method on a full-scale bridge girder. This bridge girder was freshly casted and waiting for the pre-stress release. The layout of the hard strings and the button strings are shown in this photo. Our test was conducted at the bottom, mid button of the girder. This slide shows the detail of the strings layout. During the pre-stress release, the harp strings were cut one by one, and the button strings were released together with a hydraulic pump. The ultrasonic test setup is the same as that of con small concrete beam. The DMAC targets were used to measure the string after the pre-stress release. This figure shows the ultrasonic results. From the figure, we can see that when the strings were released, the wave velocity increased in the stress direction and uh, the velocity dropped in the unstressed direction. If we zoom into the top release part, we can see more details. Each step corresponds to one cut of string. From the DMAC measurement, the string was about negative 0.083%. And we can estimate the compression stress change at the tested area is about 4.1 PSI. And the acoustoelastic, acoustoelastic coefficient is then calculated about 0.73% per PSI. So in conclusion, First, the experimental results verified the acoustoelastic effect in different concrete specimens. Acoustoelastic coefficients range from 0 0.7 to 0.8% per KSI for SCC concrete with the ultimate strength of 7 to 7.5 KSI. And second, the stretch method analysis on the entire P wave part increases the resolution of velocity measurement. So that's all. Thank you.